I'm glad you could join us. Go ahead and stab the like button and stick around for the next untold story. As the clock ticked past midnight, Sam, a seasoned pizza delivery driver, found himself on a solitary stretch of road, the moon casting eerie shadows over the landscape. He had already delivered to the usual night owl customers, the insomniacs, and the lonely souls craving comfort food. But now, his GPS directed him to a rural address far outside his usual delivery zone. The address, a dilapidated farmhouse at the end of a narrow, winding lane, seemed to loom out of the darkness like a ghostly relic from a forgotten era. Sam's headlights flickered as he approached, the beam cutting through the thick fog that had rolled in without warning. The house was barely visible, its windows darkened, and the front yard overgrown with weeds. It was an unsettling sight, even for someone used to the late-night grind. Sam parked his car, his breath visible in the chilly night air. He grabbed the pizza from the passenger seat, its box warm and inviting, a stark contrast to the cold, foreboding night. As he walked up the cracked driveway, the silence was oppressive, broken only by the crunch of gravel under his boots. The only light came from the faint glow of the moon, casting long, twisted shadows that seemed to dance just out of sight. Reaching the door, he knocked firmly, the sound echoing eerily in the silence. Moments later, the door creaked open, revealing a figure shrouded in darkness. The person was tall, with a gaunt face and hollow eyes that seemed to pierce through Sam's soul. The man's voice was raspy, almost inhuman, as he mumbled, Come in quickly. Sam hesitated for a moment, the hairs on the back of his neck standing on end, but the desperation in the man's voice pushed him forward. He stepped inside, the door shutting with a final, ominous thud behind him. The inside of the house was a maze of shadows and decay, the air thick with the smell of mildew and old wood. Just the pizza, sir, Sam said, his voice trembling slightly. He held out the box, his eyes scanning the room. The living room was sparse, the furniture covered in white sheets, and the walls lined with portraits of people who seemed to have long passed. The flickering light from a single bulb overhead cast ghostly shapes on the walls, making the whole place feel like a scene from a horror movie. The man took the pizza without a word, his hands cold and clammy. Thank you, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. You should go now. Before Sam could reply, a chilling gust of wind blew through the room, extinguishing the bulb and plunging them into darkness. Panic surged through him. The only sound was the distant, unsettling creak of the old house settling. His phone's flashlight flickered on, casting a weak beam that barely pierced the darkness. Suddenly, Sam heard footsteps, heavy, deliberate steps coming from somewhere deep within the house. They echoed through the hallways, each step resonating with an eerie finality. The hairs on Sam's arms stood on end as he turned, his flashlight flickering erratically. Hello? He called out, his voice barely more than a whisper. Is anyone there? There was no response, only the oppressive silence of the house. He took a step back, his eyes darting around, searching for a way out. The front door was still shut tight, the eerie silence outside now replaced by the sound of his own heartbeat pounding in his ears. The footsteps grew louder, closer now, and Sam's breath quickened. He could see the faint outline of a door at the end of the hallway, just beyond the reach of his flashlight's beam. Desperation clawed at him as he took a step towards it, the floorboards groaning under his weight. Just as he reached the door, the house seemed to come alive with noise. The rustling of fabric, the creaking of old wood, and the sound of something large moving in the shadows. The door handle turned slowly with an eerie creak that seemed to echo through the house, and Sam felt a cold sweat break out across his forehead. In that moment, the lights flickered back on, casting a harsh, fluorescent glow over the room. The man who had answered the door was now standing in the hallway, his eyes wide with a mixture of fear and something darker. Behind him, in the shadows, Sam saw movement. Something tall, with long, gnarled limbs and eyes that glowed with an unnatural light. The figure stepped forward, its presence overwhelming, a living nightmare materializing from the darkness. Sam's scream was swallowed by the silence as he realized the horrifying truth. The man was not alone, and neither was he. The creature's eyes locked onto Sam's, and he knew in that instant that escape was impossible. 
the nightmare had only just begun. Sam's heart thundered in his chest as he faced the looming figure, its grotesque form barely comprehensible in the dim light. The creature was nearly human but distorted, its limbs elongated and its skin a sickly pale color that seemed to absorb the faint light around it. The man at the door, his face a mask of fear and resignation, took a step back, whispering a feeble warning, run. With survival instincts kicking in, Sam made a split-second decision. He threw the pizza box at the creature. A futile gesture meant more to distract than harm. The box hit its mark, but the creature barely flinched, its cold, unblinking eyes fixed on Sam. Using this moment, Sam darted past the man and down the dimly lit hallway, his every step echoed by the heavy thuds of the creature pursuing him. The house seemed to twist and turn around him, hallways stretching and narrowing unnaturally, making him disoriented. Pictures on the walls blurred as he passed, their eyes seeming to follow him, adding to the terror of the chase. As he ran, he spotted a staircase leading upward and took the stairs two at a time, hoping to find a window or another exit on the upper floor. Reaching the top, he found himself in a long, narrow corridor lined with doors. Behind him, the creature's steps grew louder, more urgent. Sam tried the first door, locked. The second, the same. Panic rose in his throat as he realized that the creature was only seconds behind him. He could hear its rasping breath, smell the foul stench of decay emanating from its body. Finally, the third door swung open under his frantic push. It was a bathroom, small and windowless, with peeling wallpaper and an old-fashioned clawfoot tub. Desperate, Sam slammed the door shut and locked it, his hands shaking. He knew it was a temporary measure, a brief respite at best. The creature's heavy steps halted outside the door, and then there was silence. Sam backed away from the door, his eyes searching the dimly lit room for anything he could use as a weapon. There was nothing substantial, just a rusty razor blade and a bottle of cleaning solution. His mind raced, trying to think of a way out, but the options dwindled down to waiting and hoping, or facing the creature head on. Minutes passed, each second stretching out torturously. The silence outside the door was unnerving. Sam held his breath, listening, waiting for any sound. Then, unexpectedly, the silence was broken by a soft melodic humming from the other side of the door. It was a tune he faintly recognized, a lullaby perhaps, but twisted, wrong in every note. The humming grew louder, and a shadow appeared under the door, blocking the thin line of light from the hallway. Then without warning, the creature began to speak in a hoarse, broken voice, its words chilling Sam to the bone. Let me in, delivery boy. Let me in, and perhaps I'll let you out. You're trapped here, just like me. Trapped forever. Sam backed into the farthest corner of the bathroom, his mind reeling. The creature's words echoed in his head, a promise or a threat he couldn't discern. The door handle rattled softly, testing, teasing. Sam knew then that this nightmare wasn't going to end with him simply waking up. Outside, the creature waited, its presence a palpable darkness that filled the air. With nowhere to run, Sam faced the door, his resolve hardening. Whatever happened, he wouldn't go down without a fight. As the door handle turned slowly, Sam braced himself, ready to confront the horror that awaited him, knowing that his ordeal in the haunted house on the edge of Silverwood was far from over. The rattling of the door handle ceased abruptly, replaced by a deafening silence that hung heavy in the air. Sam, with his back pressed against the cold, damp wall of the bathroom, held his breath, his eyes fixed on the door. His heart pounded in his chest, each beat echoing in his ears like a drum of war. The rusty razor blade felt slippery in his sweaty grip, an inadequate weapon against the nightmare lurking just beyond the door. Suddenly, the door burst open with violent force splintering the lock and sending shards of wood flying across the small room. The creature surged forward, its form more terrifying up close. Its skin was a ghostly white, stretched taut over protruding bones, and its eyes, a deep, soulless black, seemed to swallow the light. Sam screamed, swinging the razor blade in a desperate arc. The blade sliced through the air, grazing the creature's arm. A black, tar-like substance oozed from the wound, emitting a foul stench that filled the room. But the creature barely seemed to notice the injury. With a guttural snarl, it grabbed Sam's arm, its grip iron-tight, pulling him forward into its nightmarish embrace. 
Sam's mind raced with panic as he struggled against the creature's hold, but it was like fighting against stone. The creature's other hand clasped around his neck, squeezing with supernatural strength. Sam gasped for air, his vision blurring, the edges of his consciousness fraying under the suffocating pressure. As he felt his strength waning, the creature leaned in close, its breath cold and reeking of decay. It whispered in a voice that was both eerie and sad, You cannot leave. None of us can leave. Sam's eyes widened in horror as the creature began to change. Its features softened, morphed, and within moments, it was no longer the monstrous entity he had feared, but a mirror image of himself, pale and distorted. It was as if the creature was showing him his future, a grim prophecy of what he was to become, a prisoner of this cursed house, doomed to roam its halls. With his last bit of strength, Sam pushed against the creature, breaking free from its grasp. He stumbled backward, crashing into the bathtub behind him. As he fell, his head struck the porcelain edge, and darkness swiftly enveloped him. When Sam awoke, the room was silent, and the creature was gone. He lay in the bathtub, his body aching, his mind reeling from the nightmare. But as he tried to rise, he realized the horror was not over. The door to the bathroom was gone, replaced by a seamless wall. Frantically, he searched for any exit, but there were none. The windows, the door, even the small vent. He was sealed inside. As the reality of his fate dawned on him, the air in the bathroom grew colder, and the walls seemed to close in. Sam's screams echoed off the unyielding walls unanswered. The house had claimed him, another soul lost to its endless corridors. Outside, the night carried on, the moon casting its indifferent light over the old farmhouse, now silent as a grave. Inside, Sam's last desperate cries faded into a whisper, and the house settled deeper into its ancient slumber, waiting for the next unwitting visitor to cross its threshold. It was one of those late October evenings when the chill in the air hinted that winter was just around the corner, and the fall leaves rustled restlessly under the tires of Derek's aging car as he made his way to the outskirts of town. He was a pizza delivery driver, a college student working the night shift to pay his tuition. Tonight, his last delivery was to an address he hadn't visited before, located on a remote road that even locals seldom mentioned without a shudder. As Derek turned onto the narrow, winding path that led to the supposed address, his headlights cut through the fog that had begun to descend with the darkness. The road was flanked by dense woods that seemed to absorb the light, making the path ahead appear darker and more ominous. He checked his GPS again. It confirmed he was headed in the right direction, but something about the place felt off. Finally, his car's headlights illuminated a rusted metal gate hanging ajar on one side creaking softly as it swayed in the wind. Beyond the gate lay what looked like an old manor house, its once grand features now marred by time and neglect. The house stood dark, with no welcoming lights to suggest anyone was expecting a delivery, let alone residing there. With a reluctant sigh, Derek parked his car, grabbed the warm pizza, and cautiously stepped out. As he pushed the gate to walk through, it gave a loud, eerie screech that made him jump. Shaking his head at his own nervousness, he approached the dark house, the crunch of gravel under his feet unnaturally loud in the silent night. He reached the front door, a heavy wooden thing with peeling paint, and rang the bell. No sound came from within. He knocked, but again, no response. Just as he was about to leave the pizza at the door and retreat to his car, the door creaked slowly open on its own, revealing nothing but darkness inside. Derek! A voice whispered from the shadows, as soft as the wind. It seemed to know his name, which sent a chill racing down his spine. He stepped back, his heart pounding in his chest. Who's there? He called into the darkness, but only silence answered. Deciding enough was enough, Derek turned to leave when he felt a cold hand grip his shoulder. Panicked, he spun around, but no one was there. The door to the house now stood completely open, as if inviting him in. Against his better judgment, Curiosity and an inexplicable pull led him to step inside, just to see if anyone needed help. The door slammed shut behind him, with a thud that echoed through the empty halls. Derek jumped and turned, tugging at the handle, but it wouldn't budge. The house seemed to groan around him, 
the sound of settling old bones that made the air colder, the darkness deeper. With his phone as his only light source, Derek shone it around the foyer. The beam of light revealed a grand staircase leading up to a black void, and hallways on either side filled with antique furniture draped in dusty white sheets. As he shone the light upwards, the chandelier overhead flickered to life, casting dim light that barely touched the corners of the room. That's when the soft, eerie whisper returned, floating down the staircase. Stay. Join us. Forever. The voice was both a plea and a command, wrapping around him like the cold fog outside. Derek felt the fear rise in his throat as the temperature in the room dropped, his breath visible in the air. Upstairs, a shadow moved across the wall, too quick to be natural. Something was here with him, something that didn't want him to leave. As he stood frozen in the foyer, unsure of his next move, the house began to creak louder, the whispers grew more insistent, and the shadows seemed to close in around him. Derek knew he had to find a way out, but as he turned his phone to the staircase again, the light flickered and the shadows moved closer, the story of his terrifying night far from over. Derek's heart pounded in his chest as he tried to steady his breathing, the cold air forming misty clouds with each exhale. The whispering seemed to swirl around him, enveloping him in an eerie chorus that echoed through the empty halls of the house. He knew he should leave, find a way out before things escalated further, but the door wouldn't budge and the windows were boarded up, sealed with age and neglect. Fighting back the rising panic, Derek decided that his only chance might be to find another exit, perhaps a back door or a basement escape. With his phone's flashlight leading the way, he ventured deeper into the manor, each step cautious and measured. As he walked, the house seemed to respond to his presence. Floorboards creaked underfoot as if breathing, and the walls whispered secrets long kept hidden. Portraits lined the hallway, their subjects' eyes seeming to follow him as he passed their expressions twisted in silent screams or sly smirks. He reached the end of the hallway and found himself facing a heavy wooden door that looked sturdier than the rest. Stealing himself, he tried the handle. To his surprise, it turned easily under his grip and the door opened with a low groan. Beyond it lay a descending staircase, leading down into pitch black darkness. The air grew colder as Derek peered down the stairs. The whispering intensified, now punctuated by a low moaning that resonated up from the depths. Every instinct screamed at him to turn back, but the thought of being trapped forever in the eerie house propelled him forward. Taking a deep breath, Derek began to descend the stairs, the beam from his phone casting long, sinister shadows against the damp walls. The staircase spiraled down, seemingly endless, leading him deeper into the bowels of the house. The moaning grew louder, a sorrowful sound that seemed to carry the weight of countless souls. As he reached the bottom of the staircase, Derek found himself in a large, cavernous basement. The air was thick with the smell of mold and something else, something rotten. His light flickered across old furniture covered with tattered cloth, stacks of yellowed newspapers and dolls with cracked porcelain faces that stared blankly into nothingness. Suddenly, his flashlight flickered and died, plunging him into darkness. Derek fumbled with his phone, trying to restart it, but it remained stubbornly off. As his eyes adjusted to the dark, he noticed a faint light emitting from beneath a door across the room. It was a soft, pulsing glow, like the light of a candle. Drawn to the light, Derek edged toward the door, each step cautious on the cluttered floor. The moaning had stopped, replaced by a palpable silence that hung heavy in the air. He reached the door and paused, listening. There was a sound coming from inside, a whispering chant that was unlike the voices he had heard before. It was deeper, more rhythmic, and utterly chilling. With a trembling hand, Derek pushed the door open. Inside, he was met with a scene that froze his blood. A circle of candles lit the room, and in the center, a group of figures stood around an old, ornate book. They were cloaked, their faces hidden, and as they chanted, the air around them shimmered with a dark energy. The figures turned as one to face him, their chanting ceasing abruptly. The silence was complete, oppressive, as they stared at him, unblinking. Derek felt a dread deeper than he had ever known fill him as the figures began to move toward him, their intentions unclear but their presence terrifying. Frozen in place, 
Derek realized that his intrusion had sparked a chain of events that he could no longer escape. The house, with all its whispers and shadows, had ensnared him in its ancient curse, and as the cloaked figures advanced, he understood that the story of his night was far from over. The true horror was just beginning. As the cloaked figures approached, a sense of inevitability settled over Derek. The dark, cavernous room felt like it was closing in, the flickering candlelight casting grotesque shadows that danced along the walls, mimicking the slow, deliberate movements of his approaching doom. Each figure halted just a few feet away, forming a semicircle around him. Derek could see nothing of their faces beneath the hoods, only the glint of their eyes in the candlelight, cold and calculating. The leader of the group, slightly taller than the others, stepped forward. With a voice that seemed to resonate directly into Derek's mind, the figure spoke. You should not have come here, it said, the voice neither male nor female, but unsettlingly calm and authoritative. But now that you have, you must bear witness. Before Derek could respond or plead, the leader raised a hand and the other figure stepped back in unison. From the shadows behind them, they dragged something or someone forward. It was another figure, bound and hooded, struggling weakly against their grip. Derek's heart raced as he realized it was another delivery driver, a colleague who had vanished weeks earlier, his disappearance a mystery that had haunted their local community. The leader turned back to Derek, continuing as if explaining a simple fact. This land, this house, it feeds on fear, on life. It binds us to it, and in return, we are granted the shadow's gifts. But it requires nourishment, a tribute. Derek's throat tightened, his instincts screaming for him to run, but his body refused to respond, frozen in place by the dark energy that filled the room. He watched in horror as the figures chanted in a language he couldn't understand, their voices rising in a crescendo that seemed to shake the very foundations of the house. As they chanted, the bound figure's struggles grew weaker until, with a final, desperate gasp, the body went limp. The room filled with a sound like a wind rushing through a tunnel, and the air seemed to pulse with energy. The candles flared brightly, then dimmed, casting the room back into relative darkness. The circle is complete, the leader said, turning back to Derek. But the house always hungers for more. The cloaked figures advanced toward Derek again, their movements synchronized and purposeful. Derek wanted to scream, to run, to do anything but stand there. But his body was not his own to control anymore. The shadows around him seemed to reach out, tendrils of darkness that caressed his skin with icy fingers. As they drew closer, Derek realized the terrible truth. He wasn't just a witness. He was the next offering. The realization hit him with a despair so profound it anchored him to the spot, his mind reeling as the figures surrounded him, their chanting resuming louder and more insistent. The last thing Derek saw before the darkness enveloped him completely was the flickering candlelight reflecting off the old, ornate book, its pages turning as if by an unseen hand, preparing for the next ritual. The house claimed him, another lost soul swallowed by its ancient hunger, his screams echoing silently into the void as the story of the old manor house claimed another chapter, endlessly repeating in the shadows of Silverwood. It was just past 10 p.m. when Maria, a college student working part-time at a local pizza place, received an order for a delivery to what seemed like an ordinary residential area on the outskirts of her small town. She loaded the pizza, checked the address again on her GPS, and set off in her compact car, feeling the familiar thrill of driving late at night, when the roads were quiet and the air was clear. The address led her down a series of increasingly narrow and twisted streets, the houses growing fewer and farther between, until she was driving alongside the local forest. This part of town had always given her the creeps. Rumors swirled among the locals about strange sightings and eerie noises emanating from the woods, especially on foggy nights like tonight. As she turned onto Pine Hollow Road, her headlights cut through the thick fog, revealing the road ahead in fleeting glimpses. The GPS announced she had arrived, but looking around, all Maria could see was an overgrown lot and what looked like an abandoned house barely visible through the trees and mist. Confused, Maria double-checked the address and the order. It was correct. Maybe the GPS was off? She decided to call the customer for clarification, but as she reached for her phone, it slipped from her hand, falling between the seats. 
Cursing softly, she unbuckled her seatbelt and reached down to retrieve it. Just then, a soft thump sounded from the back of her car. Maria froze, her hand pausing in midair. She listened intently but heard nothing more. Assuming it was just her equipment shifting in the trunk, she grabbed her phone and dialed the customer's number. The phone rang, and rang, and rang. No answer. Maria's unease grew. The fog seemed to thicken, swirling around her car like a living thing. She tried the number again, her gaze darting nervously around the darkened lot and the shadowy outline of the house. Still no answer. A cold breeze whipped through the trees, carrying with it a faint, inexplicable sound. A whisper. A laugh. Or perhaps just the wind. Maria shivered, pulling her jacket tighter around her. Maybe she should just leave the pizza at the door and go. That was the protocol for no-show customers anyway. She grabbed the pizza and stepped out of the car, her headlights illuminating a path through the overgrown weeds to the front porch of the house. The building looked even more dilapidated up close, its windows boarded up and the paint peeling. As she approached, the air grew inexplicably colder. Reaching the porch, Maria noticed the door was slightly ajar. She pushed it open with her foot, calling out, Pizza delivery! But only silence greeted her. She placed the pizza box on the dusty floor just inside the door, eager to get back to her car. As she turned to leave, a sudden gust of wind slammed the door shut behind her, plunging her into darkness. Maria gasped, fumbling for her phone to use as a flashlight. The screen lit up, and as she swung the light around, she caught a glimpse of figures, no, shadows, that seemed to flicker and move along the walls. Heart pounding, Maria hurried back to the door, trying to open it, but it wouldn't budge. Panic set in as she realized she was locked inside. The whispering sound returned, louder this time, accompanied by footsteps creaking on the floorboards above her. Trapped in the old house, with only her dim phone light and her rising terror, Maria faced a nightmarish reality. Something or someone was in the house with her, and her night was far from over. Maria's breath came in short, sharp gasps as she pressed her back against the cold, unforgiving door, her phone trembling in her hand as the only source of light. Her mind raced for rational explanations. Perhaps the wind. Maybe some kind of animal had taken shelter here. Or it could just be the old house settling. But none of her thoughts could quiet the terror that clenched her chest. Forcing herself to move, Maria slowly crept away from the door, her light casting eerie shadows that danced along the peeling wallpaper and cracked floorboards. The whispering seemed to grow louder, a cacophony of unintelligible murmurs that seemed almost human. Every instinct screamed at her to find another way out. She remembered spotting a broken window as she approached the house. Maybe it was wide enough for her to escape through. As she moved cautiously through the darkened hallway, her phone's light flickered over old, dusty furniture draped with white sheets, making them look like ghostly figures waiting in the shadows. Her heart skipped as she nearly tripped over a loose floorboard, the noise startlingly loud in the oppressive silence of the house. Pausing to catch her breath, Maria listened intently hoping not to hear those footsteps again. But then, unmistakably, a soft creak sounded from above, slow and deliberate. Someone, or something, was indeed in the house with her, moving with a purpose she couldn't understand. Pushing down her fear, Maria continued towards the back of the house, where she remembered seeing the broken window. The kitchen, cluttered with debris and remnants of the past, smelled of mold and decay. The air was thick, making it hard to breathe as she navigated through the mess. Finally reaching the window, she found it boarded up from the inside. Desperation gripped her as she yanked at the boards, her fingers aching as she pulled with all her might. To her relief, the nails were old and rusted, giving way under her persistent efforts. One by one, the boards fell away, allowing the cold night air to rush in, carrying with it the musty smell of the forest. Uh, no. Maria was just about to hoist herself through the window when she heard a loud crash from the direction of the front of the house. Frozen in fear, she listened as heavy footsteps began to descend the staircase, each thud echoing through the empty rooms, drawing nearer. With no time to lose, Maria squeezed through the window, cutting her hands on the jagged glass as she scrambled out. Landing heavily on the damp ground outside, she didn't pause to catch her breath. Instead, she ran her feet slipping on the wet leaves as she dashed through the overgrown yard. The moon, obscured by clouds earlier, now shone brightly, casting a pale light that guided her back towards her car. Her heart pounded in her ears, 
drowning out the sounds of the night as she reached her vehicle and fumbled with the keys. Glancing back at the house, she saw the front door swing open. A dark figure stood in the doorway, outlined by the dim light from inside the house. It didn't follow her. It just watched. Maria managed to unlock her car and threw herself inside, locking the doors the moment she was in. She started the engine and sped away from the house, not daring to look back until she was clear of the forest and back onto the main road. Her hands shook on the steering wheel, and her breath was ragged with fear and exertion. As she drove back to town, the weight of what had happened began to settle in. Who or what was in that house? And what did it want? These questions plagued her as she navigated the empty streets, the events of the night replaying over and over in her mind. Maria knew one thing for certain, she would never return to that house. But as she would soon discover, some encounters linger far beyond the moment of escape, weaving themselves into the fabric of one's life in ways she could never have anticipated. The night's terror was over, but the story, her story, was far from concluded. Maria drove back into the familiar lights of town, the comforting glow of street lamps and the occasional late-night wanderer walking alongside the road, offering a stark contrast to the darkness she had fled. Her mind was a whirlwind of fear and confusion, replaying the night's events over and over. She couldn't shake the image of the dark figure standing in the doorway, watching her as she fled. Upon reaching her apartment, Maria parked her car and hurried inside, locking the door behind her. The safety of her own space should have brought relief, but the shadows of her small living room seemed to press in around her, whispering echoes of the night's terror. Every creak and groan of the building set her nerves on edge. She was home, but the fear followed her like a persistent shadow. Exhausted but too anxious to sleep, Maria sat on her couch, wrapped in a blanket, her mind racing. She decided to do some research on the old house, hoping to find some explanation that might ease her mind. Pulling out her laptop, she searched for any history or news about the property. Hours slipped by as she dug through old news archives and local history blogs. Her search uncovered a chilling story. Decades ago, the house was the site of a mysterious disappearance. A family had vanished without a trace one stormy night leaving behind a house filled with their belongings and no sign of a struggle. The case had gone cold, leaving only rumors and ghost stories in its wake. As Maria read, a cold draft swept through her apartment, causing her to shiver. She got up to check the windows, finding them securely closed. Confused, she returned to the couch, her eyes drawn to the screen's glowing light. That's when she noticed it. A small notification in the corner of her laptop screen. It was a news alert from a local online newspaper. The headline sent a cold spike of fear through her heart. Mysterious figure spotted in town, resembling historic disappearance case. The article detailed sightings of a shadowy figure in the outskirts of town, near where Maria had made her delivery. Each sighting was accompanied by reports of strange whispers and a feeling of intense dread. The description matched the figure Maria had seen standing in the doorway of the old house. A sinking feeling settled in her stomach as she read, the connection was too coincidental to ignore. She glanced around her dimly lit apartment, suddenly feeling very exposed and vulnerable. The idea that whatever she had encountered might not be confined to the old house was terrifying. Her thoughts were abruptly interrupted by a faint whisper, so soft she almost convinced herself it was her imagination. But then it came again, louder this time, a sinister susurration that seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere all at once. Maria! Her blood froze. The voice was unmistakable, the same one that had whispered her name in the darkened house. Her heart pounded painfully against her ribs as she slowly turned toward the window, her breath catching in her throat. There, pressed against the glass, was the dark silhouette of a figure, its eyes reflecting the light from her laptop screen with an unnatural glow, the same eyes that had watched her flee into the night. Maria stumbled backward her mind reeling with panic as she realized the entity had followed her, bridging the gap between its haunted domain and her own world. As the figure began to tap slowly against the window, each thud a chilling echo in the silent apartment, Maria understood that some doors, once opened, might never be closed again. The haunting had only just begun, and the night's horrors were far from over. The terrifying truth was clear. It wasn't just the house that was haunted. It was her. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video 